I am so excited for my guest today, one of my favorite people in the whole world. She starred in Wicked, in Hamilton, and in The Heights. She is one of my all-time favorite voices that I've ever heard. Stay tuned because I feel like this is going to be a super inspiring episode of Breaking Broadway. Welcome, Mandy Gonzalez! You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. Let's talk about what you just went through. This series right now is on um, getting through eight shows a week. And you got through eight shows a week with cancer. Yes. It's crazy. And I just, I I can't believe that you did that. You were doing the show while going to your treatments. Yes. During the pandemic, too. Yes. It was insane, Carrie. I mean, um, a big part of... uh, my being able to go through it was uh, the stage that I was diagnosed at, the chemo treatments that they were able to put me on at that time. Um, you know, it was I was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, after my first mammogram, and I was in complete shock because uh, nobody in my family had ever been diagnosed. I was the first wow. in my family, hopefully the last. Yeah, and. Um, you know, I at that time I was playing Angelica in Hamilton, and I remember, you know, like you do when you're in a show, you don't have time to go to the doctor. You know, yes. self care and your mom, yeah. like you don't have time to take care of yourself. Like, what yeah. is what is that? But I'm grateful that I went, and mm-hmm. I remember um, getting that phone call. I was uh, in between shows. And I remember getting that phone call and then having to go and do a show that mm. night and being oh my like, gosh. okay, but I think that there was something about the show must go on mentality yeah. that I have that honestly- We both have that. Yeah. yeah. It honestly, um, it saved me because I made the decision that early on, and I'm lucky I could have made, I could make that decision mm-hmm. that cancer was going to be one part of my life, but it wasn't going to take all of my life. Mm. And I think that if it had took um, my ability to perform away from me, that I would have been uh, doubly like devastated. And wow. because it gave me a focus yes. and it gave me a community uh-huh. um, to, to be around that supported me. And I was very private about when I was diagnosed, I wanted to kind of keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. But then as I went on and I learned more about, uh, you know, what was, what was happening and I learned more about cancer and, uh, how Latinas have been treated, uh, through treatment and how a lot of times, uh, we get diagnosed at a later stage because, Mm. uh, uh, historically, we have a distrust of doctors. Uh, there's mm. a language barrier. Uh, mm. My aunt, uh, who did pass from cancer, uh, not breast cancer, but she passed away from lung cancer. I, I got to learn a little bit more about her diagnosis. Uh, she passed when she was 47 and she had pain and she did not go to the doctor. And I think um, I wanted to represent and uh, be a voice for my mm-hmm. community. And I knew in order to do that, I had to be honest about my diagnosis and that was hard you know yeah yeah but once I was I felt this weight kind of lifted off of me Mm -hmm. and uh I did get so much support from my the company at Hamilton but also Mm -hmm. from my friends in the Broadway community you were one of the friends that Mm -hmm. reached out to me and we actually became really a lot closer um I felt like through that uh you'd be surprised at how many people um, can also reject you when wow. you come out with that kind of diagnosis um, because for some reason they you get the impression at least I did that mm-hmm. you feel like it's contagious <gasps> yeah. or something like yeah. oh well she must have brought it upon herself or mm. you know or mm. something like that so when you have those friends that do reach out to you that that do tell you I'm here and uh, um, it like sorry but I know, it, I'm crying too. No, but it really um, it makes a difference in your life. And I remember you dropping off snacks to me at the theater, and um, just those little like gestures. Like you gave me a couple books that really like spoke to me during oh, that God. time. And honestly, um, uh, I love you so much. And I love you. I think that um, that was like amazing, amazing. 
and uh, you're an amazing friend. And I just, uh, on that, I think uh, I needed that, Mm -hmm. you know, as strong as I am and as much as I talk about, you know, having no fear, that was such a painful time for me yeah and then when the pandemic happened and broadway shut down and i still had to go to to treatment yeah. you know in the city and i was really scared and all those things i still had people from the broadway community reaching out to me and checking in on me and uh yeah it saved me it really wow. did it really did so i think going through that when i was able to perform um i had started treatment because of uh, uh, my certain onc type test, for those that don't know, it's uh, an onc type test is something that they can give to you now because of research, um, where they can test the tumor to see the um, to see how much uh, percentage of a chance it has of recurring, and that determines whether you're going to need additional treatment besides surgery. And mine was at a, a range in my age that I needed uh, chemotherapy and radiation. And uh, and I was like, all right. And I found an oncologist and he was like, okay, Mandy, you're this is going to be hard, but you're tougher than this. Mm. And I'm going to make sure, <laughs> not I'm going to make sure, but you can perform. And I remember, um, you know, having issues and times when I had to sit down uh, after I sang a song or things like that, mm-hmm. but they had a chair waiting for me. And, mm. you know, I remember after my surgery, I had a lumpectomy and afterwards um, I couldn't lift my arm for the work pose. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I felt very like exposed because yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like that's such a famous pose. People are going to know, yeah. you know, and yeah. uh, I remember talking to my stage manager and she's like, well, you lift it as high as you can. And then eventually you'll be able to lift it again. And, uh, and I did. But um, that was a very much like me having to tell myself it's OK. Yes. It's OK. Um, and I think that's something that we have a hard time doing. Mm -hmm. As performers, eight shows a week, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of younger performers will ask me, well, what do you do if you get sick? What do you do if this happens and this happens? And there has to be a grace that you give yourself as a person that it's not going to be the same eight shows a week. And you never know what somebody's going through and um, you just have to do your best, you know, for that Mm -hmm. that show, you know, and uh, and I feel like that's something that I learned going through cancer, you know, but it's something that I learned even before that with my, you know, because when you sing shows like we sing, yeah, there's a lot that is expected of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're expected to hit those notes eight shows a week. And um, it's like you build this like fearlessness of like, yes, I can do this. And, Mm -hmm. But there are those moments where you're like, man, I don't feel good today. And yeah, my voice is tired. And yeah. or you even have phlegm and you can't just get no. through it. And it's like, oh, all of a sudden it's like, well, um, you know, what's wrong with me? Why can't mm-hmm. I do these things? And then you just go, oh, right. I'm a human. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, I think there definitely has to be room for that uh, for a performer to know that it's work. Yeah. What we do is work. And some days it's really great and you feel like uh, – I always feel like um, that movie, The Black Swan, uh-huh. it always like resonated for me because it's like that end where she – I don't know if everybody felt this way about Black Swan, but at the end when she dies, it's like she has the performance of her life. And uh-huh. I felt like as a performer, I know what that feels like. You mm-hmm. know what it feels like to just feel like you gave everything and it was exposed and open and, oh my gosh, like it's going to be the same tomorrow. And mm-hmm. it's not, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, now we're in the, in the yeah. groove of the show. And as much as you want it to always be like that first time, mm-hmm. you got to yeah. find what it is every time, you know, yeah. and it doesn't always have to be that, that same yeah. thing. And that's okay, yeah. you know? Yeah. Even the audience affects 
what happens on stage. They're a part of it. Absolutely. When you're like, oh my gosh, they hate us. Like, yeah. They're yeah. not laughing at the same yeah, thing. Yeah, you don't want to take it personally, but it's still, it does affect the whole show. Right. And then they stand up at the end and they're like, this yeah, is the I best know. thing I ever saw in my yeah. life. And you're like, oh my God, they're amazing. They, Thank you. They were just quiet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so how did you get through that time? Did you, I mean, you didn't even have time to really do self-care things, right? And do the I, show. I didn't. I think, but that was good for me. Uh You know, um, because, you know, after you have treatment, um, it's like for me, it was two weeks in between treatment. So Mm -hmm. when you first have your treatment, the first three days were still good because Uh of, you know, what you have to do afterwards and the, you know, the medications that you have to take. And then the fourth and fifth day were really hard. And those mm-hmm. days I would call out because oh. my body just could not take it. And mm-hmm. um, But in the beginning, it, I just fought through it. And mm-hmm. I would be like, okay, I'm feeling these cramps or I'm feeling, you know, because for me it affected me a lot in my back. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot of cramps in my back that happened because of treatment. And, um, and it was really hard to just, you know, be in heels and <laughs> on yeah. a turntable and all yeah. those kind of things. But I think, you know – a lot of it, even when my back hurt, I would just go, okay, Mandy, you have to breathe from your core and your diaphragm. And I would just focus. I would just, mm-hmm. some of the performances I was like, oh my God, like I'm so in it. You know, I would just, wow. yeah, I would just get into that place that I needed to go. And, but I think that it was that, that the show must go on and I have to, I have to keep going. And it wasn't until the pandemic happened and I stopped that I realized how much I needed to stop. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Like, I realized um, I needed to take time to heal. I Mm -hmm. needed, and I watched, um, the thing that I watched was, I watched every episode of Cheers, (laughs) which they have 12 seasons, Uh. for those of you that don't know. And uh, that became my my thing. You know, I had treatment, then I would watch Cheers. And I, I just needed to be, I needed to, mm-hmm. you know, and at that time my daughter was doing homeschool because school was closed and yeah. I needed to be there for her mm-hmm. and for my husband because it, you know, cancer, what I've learned is it's a not, um, my friend, my friend James Monroe Eigelhart says it's the mm-hmm. best. It's not a me disease. It's a we disease mm-hmm. because it affects everybody that loves you. And, um, and it was really hard for them. And I think me being there for them was more important than me being uh, on a stage at that time. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself during that time. And, and then, you know, I got to, I got to heal and I got to heal with my family. And then like you, I think, you know, what do you do as a performer when you can't perform when you're a live performer and this is what you do. And, and so I started to get, um, people started to reach out uh, to me from the cancer community. Uh, BCRF, I became a member of their board, uh, which is Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, Research is the reason. It was wonderful (laughs) because they threw a gala for me during that time to honor me. And uh, and I called all my friends. You were there and asked them to sing. And that became part of my my next journey, which was advocacy. And um, I started to use my voice for that. And I felt like the thing that I missed the most about performing was the connection. And how yes. can I do that behind, you know, a screen? And mm-hmm. so I figured out how to do that and how to reach out to people online and other, because I was very open about my diagnosis, other patients were reaching out to me with their own stories. And, um, and so I felt like I built a new community for myself which was really good. 